Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer live pop-up chat and this is the chat that you've probably all been waiting for. Um, I am of course going to be talking and discussing the Prince Andrew BBC interview that was conducted by Emily Maitlis, obviously of the BBC, that was broadcast a few days ago. Um, and I would like to kick off by probably talking about why I haven't actually spoken about this sooner. Um, and the reason is I wanted to hold back um, because, like, that's okay. I just, I heard something downstairs. I just realized I'd left the telly on. Um, no, <laughs> I know, right. So the reason why I held back was because I wanted to just, um, hang on. Yes, it is the TV. I'm gonna have to ignore my TV. Right, so the reason why I didn't speak about it straight away was because I knew there would be a lot of debating about it and I wasn't sure whether anything else might come out kind of after it if you know what I mean. Um, so yes I was right there has been a lot of debate, discussion, talk, um, you know as far as we are aware Sarah the Duchess of York's uh, Sarah Ferguson has also defended her man. Um, there has been a lot going on around it so there's kind of you know quite a bit to, to talk about. So I don't have any articles open in front of me. I'm going to try and do this kind of from as much, you know, memory, things that I've read, things that I've heard as possible, because I don't really want to read out, you know, vast tracts of article that could be someone else's opinion. Um, I want to try and stay as fact-based as I possibly can whilst I'm talking about this. So if you've heard anything that you want me to particularly discuss, within this chat, and I'm going to try and keep this chat around about 20 minutes, um, make sure you say it in the comments and I will try obviously and answer it in a comment. But I'm going to start right from the beginning, which was the actual interview itself. Now, um, it started off a little bit in documentary style, so it kind of explained the issue and then went it straight into the article. So it was round about 45 minutes, that kind of time. And just as was billed, it was a no holds barred interview. I mean, Emily did not hold back. You know, she asked all the questions that I think, you know, everyone had been wanting Prince Andrew, uh, the Duke of York to answer. And he did, you know, he did answer all the questions. Um, it may not have been to everybody's liking, but he did answer all the questions. Um, I've heard, you know, certain reporters saying, you know, that that they thought it was a massive car crash, that he shouldn't have done it. Um, and I have to say, I'm not entirely sure. There are, there are advantages and disadvantages to, to having done it. You know, if he'd have stayed completely silent, there would have been those who have said that he should have spoken out. And then obviously, now that he's spoken out, uh, people are saying maybe he shouldn't have done, that he's made things worse, that he's raised more questions, um, that there are more questions to answer than what were answered. Some people have said that he wasn't telling the truth. Uh, we've had body language experts, looking at his body language, and there's everything going on around it. We've even had reports that it was Sarah, Duchess of York, who put him, who actually gave him the idea to do this and pushed him to do it. I don't know how true that is, uh, but I have heard reports about that. Um, but he did answer. Oh, and also some people have criticized the fact that he didn't show enough remorse for the girls that are making the allegations. Since the interview, we've had um, the legal team behind the girls come out and say that he should be uh, making contact with them to tell them all that all that he is aware of uh, with, with the whole Je Je Jeffrey Epstein um, situation. Um, so, so yes, it's probably raised more questions than what he's answered. We also had the medical revelation that he doesn't sweat, or rather at the time he didn't sweat. So he said he had this medical condition um, that caused him to, um, to, to not sweat. And I think he said that came from, uh, from when he was in the Falklands, some kind of, you know, mental trauma that prevented him, that res resulted in him not being able to sweat. So he used that as a reason why he couldn't possibly 
have, have met Virginia Roberts. He said categorically that he didn't remember meeting her. He didn't say that he hadn't met her. He said that, um, you know, he chose his words carefully. He said he couldn't remember meeting her. So take from that what you will. I know many of you already have. Um, but obviously, you know, I'm trying to keep quite level on this. Um, trying to stay factual. That is what he said. Um, he also, now this is the bit that kind of stood out for me. And this is the bit that I think may take this forward or not take it forward, as the case may be. Um, he said, basically, he alluded to that he had an alibi for at least one of the occasions that uh, I think it was Virginia Roberts was saying that she had had relations with Andrew. So I think this was the occasion. Do you remember the photo? The photo with, the, with his, his arm around Virginia? Well, um, I think it was relating to that occasion in London. So he said that he wasn't with her. He said that he was with Beatrice at a pizza restaurant. I think he said Woking, so somewhere in Woking. And he said that stood out in his mind because he doesn't often go to pizza places. But he did also say that somebody had reminded him that he'd been there. Now, all those years ago, I'm sorry, I don't care how often you go to a pizza place or not you would not remember that you had been to that pizza place on that actual date yourself. You, you, you would have needed someone to remind you. So the only people that could have reminded him of that would have been Beatrice herself, um, or, as what I think, it may have been the police protection officers, because I've read the book by Ken Worf, who was Diana's former um, protection officer, and they are required, it's part of their job, that they send back a report, a written report of the day um, about where, where they have been, what they've done with their charge. So, obviously, Andrew has round-the-clock um, police protection. And at the time, I do believe Beatrice did too. Beatrice doesn't anymore, it was taken away. But I think at the time that that the alleged incident took place, I think she did too. So there would have been two uh, police accounts, official accounts for his whereabouts. Now, I think what he's done is gone back through these police accounts and kind of double-checked those dates because the only people that would have concrete evidence of this, concrete, you know, recorded, reported, submitted results would have been the police protection officers. So... That is what I am thinking that he's got that information from. I think it was a police protection officer that reminded him of where he'd been because he'd been doing some digging. So if he has that receipt, so to speak, if he has that receipt, that is why I think the, the, the girls' um, legal teams are saying, well, you know, speak to us. You know, if you help us with the inquiries, if you've got this information, then show us sort of thing. So my kind of thought is now that if he does actually have this proof, if he does have proof of his whereabouts, and it's not just not just Beatrice saying so, if it is literally just that he has actually got a police independent record of where he's been, I do think that he should probably submit that. Not necessarily go there in person and do it, not at this point, although he did say that he would. He did say that if if his legal team you know, advised him to do so, he would cooperate. So he did say that. But I think it would be enough at this point in time to submit any evidence that he has about his whereabouts. Because basically, if he does have evidence to say that he was not there on that date, he was actually in a pizza place, that kind of legally would discredit what Virginia was saying and would actually make her an unreliable witness, I do believe in legal terms, uh, which would then probably, you know, put doubt in the minds of any jury that would be judging the case. So that would actually work in Andrew's favour if he has those receipts, so to speak. So, you know... Perhaps he should, perhaps he should. If he has them, he should submit them um, because that may that may help, from his point of view, his case. Um, so I think going forwards, this whole thing kind of hinges upon 
um, upon that, upon that particular incident. If the girls' legal teams would have had enough to bring a charge against him, I think they already would have done, uh, because obviously he would then be liable for extradition, um, because he is not above the law. Um, and I certainly don't think anybody should be above the law. He certainly would not be. If there was a charge brought, they could put in an extradition request and, you know, potentially he could be forced to go and do it. So I kind of think from his point of view, if he does have anything, then he should do it voluntarily. Um, and I think a really, really, really good start would be um, if he has these receipts as to where he was, then he should produce them and send them off um, and then see literally what happens. Right, I am going to go to the chat room and see what people are talking about because I just know that there is going to be a lot, a lot of comments because there has been so much talk. Also, um, in the last few days, he has lost um, certain sponsorships and certain charities are questioning wh whether they want to to keep him on board so in a certain respect it has been a very damaging interview for him uh personally um so let me just go and say uh tonya says to say he has no recollection of this woman or girl and there is a picture to prove he absolutely prove absolutely, absolutely proves the opposite well obviously he says he says he has no recollection of it <sighs> From a personal point of view, to me, it looks like a real picture. Um, that's not without the possibility that it could potentially have been doctored. Um, he said it was a picture of a picture of a picture. So he would like to see the original, the original. Um, you know, if there's anything in that, I'm not terribly sure. But that is what he said. Um, Bev M says, what really amazes me is the fact that people, reporters and experts try to connect Harry and Meghan. What? Oh, it's got nothing to do with Harry and Meghan, my goodness. Who are these people? Look, I'm sure they try and bring, ev well, I know they try and bring everything to Harry and Meghan, but this is one thing they most definitely cannot put on um, Harry and Meghan. Lauren L says, I heard the Duchess was against him. To oh, no, I heard the opposite. I heard that it was her advice. Although, like I say, I have no... Um, no proof of that at all, but I'd heard that she wanted him to do it. Uh, Catherine Mark says, you look so professional with the glasses and without the crown. Thank you. I'm trying different things. Um, Liz Mom says, I cringed during the entire interview. There were moments when I thought he was being truthful. Then there were moments when I thought, hmm. <laughs> and I, I'm not going to say what those moments are. Um, I'm sure, you know, you all have you know, we all saw the same thing. We all saw the same thing, didn't we? But again, it all boils down to not somebody's opinion of it. It boils down to what can be proved in a court of law. Is there enough evidence to bring a charge? Uh, does he have enough to, to kind of, you know, quell anything before it even happens with any receipts that he might have about his whereabouts or anything else? It all hinges on the legalities of it rather than people's opinion because we all have an opinion. We all have an opinion on it, um, but it's all about the legalities of it. Veronica says, it's not looking good for Andrew. How will this affect him publicly uh, when his eldest daughter Beatrice gets married next year? I think he tried to sort this out before before the, we before the wedding, but it kind of hasn't. It's, it's, it's not been the success that he thought it was going to be. Let's put it that way. Um, Stephanie D. Kelly says, wow, there are a lot of people who need to answer questions. It's puzzling from a distance to see why he made the decision to do the interview. None of the US players are even being asked. Um, again, this was just him. I think it was just off his back. And he did, I think, at the final stages of setting up the interview, get the Queen's permission to do it. Um, but, you know, she wasn't to know it was going to go, well, be taken this way. Um, yes, we're not mentioning Megan on this one. This has got nothing to do with Megan whatsoever. Um, I'm just trying to find uh, a comment. 
Um, Chelsea says, if someone has actual proof that you were not there, he should have presented it. Well, like I say, if he's mentioned that basically he, he, he has an alibi, Beatrice, um, then he kind of needs to... I think he would have had police protection records, like I say. Um, in, their, in their daily report that they all do on their charge every single day, uh, of, of every single job they've done with the Royal, they will send a report. It will be there. Um, it will be in, in those reports. Um, Julie says, I almost want to feel bad for him, but he was absolutely clueless as to how he was coming across in the interview and how his responses were so blasé. He put no thought in, in answering the questions. Some people have, some commenters have said that they think that he thought he was doing a good job. Um, and I agree, I, it didn't come across, um, the remorseful part didn't come across. Um, he was literally trying to obviously defend himself and put his own story across, but um, there wasn't remorse, an outpouring of remorse, a display of remorse for, for the girls um, and, and their allegations. Obviously, he's in a difficult position himself because he doesn't want to say... Um, you know, yes, they were being abused because then that could kind of shine a light on, well, did you know that they were being abused at the time? Uh, so he kind of had to be a bit careful, but there most certainly was not, you know, anywhere near, I don't think, an adequate display of, of remorse and regret for what individuals are claiming they have gone through. And again, we have to leave, we have to use those kinds of terms because nothing has gone to a court of law yet in terms of Andrew. Um, so there we go. Let me just kind of zip down to the bottom slightly. Um, DZN Cat says, this may not be popular. Oh no, shall I read it? Uh, but I don't know what he could have said that would have made this better. If he apologizes and he looks more guilty, that's kind of what I just said. Um, yeah, to some that he had some knowledge of that. He also did say that, um, and this comment has been picked up on quite a bit as well, he said that people were, were, were coming and going all the time. I think he said it was like um, like a station. People were coming and going the whole time. Um, and he said that it wasn't, it wasn't, he wasn't aware of like why they were coming and going. Uh, and obviously some people are, are quite rightly saying, well, if they were young, if they were young girls, why? Um, you know, why wouldn't you particularly ask questions? I do think that he was after a lot of freebies. I mean, you know, there were free homes and free, you know, free aeroplane rides and all this business. He also said that he did go to New York to meet with with Jeffrey to break up the friendship. He said he felt um, duty bound or that kind of thing. Um, I mean, again, he could have done it over the phone. I mean, he didn't have to actually go there. Um, he said the friendship was advantageous in terms of connections. Again, I mean, you know, you can't discredit that because, you know, so an influential businessman would have been, you know, would have had things to teach him. But then, again, we don't know all the other stuff around it. And it all kinds of, again, I think basically boils down to the legalities of it. Is there enough to bring a charge? If there is, then I think the girls' legal teams should do it. In which case, um, Andrew should then, um, if not already, now that he said what he said, should produce any evidence that he has to discredit it. If there is a massive conflict, then obviously that could result in, in a trial, of which... I think it would be advisable for him to probably, you know, take part in fully rather than being um, almost made to do it by extradition. Um, I think doing anything of this nature voluntarily is better than being actually made to do it. Um, Unique K says, my question is, uh, why did he have to go to New York to end the French? Well, yeah, I agree. I completely agree. He could have done it over the phone. Um, Yulita says it is guilty by association and we do have to be careful by guilty by association just today on morning TV I was listening to um, Lady Victoria Harvey she was actually she's actually in 
in America now and she phoned in, she did a video chat and she was saying that she also, her comment, it was very strange wording, turn of phrase, she said she saw but didn't see what was going on. In other words, I think, I think if you'd have, I think what she was saying, she, and she does kind of need to explain herself a bit more, but she, I think from what I gather, what she was saying was, it was there, it was, it was obvious, but if you didn't really open your eyes to kind of know what was going on, you wouldn't have seen it because it was so subtle. Um, and I think that's kind of what she was saying. So we do have to be very careful with guilty by association. Um, but again, it's all about the legalities of it. Um, yes, I did hear the story too about all the cameras in the rooms. Again, you know, there would have to be, it's, it's all evident, there would have to be evidence of all of this. Um, Bareback Barbarians FC says, it wasn't on Fergie's advice. It's a lie started by the Daily Mail to try and make Andrew seem more sympathetic. He was completely out of touch. It was one of the most cringe movie interviews since Charles. Again, like I said, I have not seen any evidence that it was Sarah that actually, you know, encouraged him to do it. But I have heard reports that it was her. Um, but like I say, we will not know on this until anyone actually starts talking about it. Uh, right, I'm going to wrap this up. I did say I was going to keep it round about 20 minutes. Uh, I may also pop on and do another live chat in a little while. I don't know. So don't hold me to it, but I may pop on and do a little live chat extra. I think I've kind of, in a nutshell, spoken about most of the things that we actually kind of have, you know, evidence of, obviously, what Andrew said. Um, and I think, like I said, the main part to remember is about the legalities of it. The, the, the full legal process should always play out, no matter who or what you are. Son, son of, a, of a reigning monarch, it doesn't matter. You know, if you have a case to answer, then you should. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit that bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. Also, please make sure that you subscribe. So, from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye.